Hello everyone, as you saw, today we are going to be playing Heroes of the Monkey Tavern. This is a single player RPG by the game developer Monkey Stories. It is available for the PC via Steam and for the PS4 from the PlayStation Store. The game features eight player classes, Warrior, Barbarian, Paladin, Rogue, Archer, Monk, Priest, and Elementalist. There are three difficulty levels, real-time fights, 22 different enemies with boss battles, support for both keyboard, mouse, and gamepad, traps and hidden secrets, and much, much more. Now, there is music as well, but even if Monkey Stories gave me written permission in giant neon billboard form planted right outside of YouTube's HQ, there's still a chance that YouTube might mute my video or worse. So I will be substituting royalty-free background music once again, any music you hear is not part of the game. Also, I don't have a mic boom yet, so you're going to hear some clicks and clatters from my keyboard and mouse, and I apologize for that in advance. Anyway, let's get started. All right, everyone, here we are at the character creation screen, uh, well, party creation, I should say, and you have a number of classes involved. You have, of course, warrior, barbarian, rogue, archer, Paladin, Monk, and Priest, and Elementalist, which is, you know, Magic User. And uh, your Warrior is usually your, your mainstay uh, for any kind of uh, battle. Your Barbarian, uh, and according to them, represents the power of muscle during the battle. Uh, specialize in axes, train hard enough, you can use two weapons, and they can go berserk. The rogue is uh, obviously a rogue, is a bane. Once you put a dagger into his hands, and he will learn, he will learn to have one in both hands. His talent is to, to, to detect secret passages like no one else. So, of course, uh, archer, uh, bow mastery that he can even increase inflict uh, the damage inflicted with his bow. And the Paladin stands like a wall in front of his enemies when he's using a shield. Uh, Monk. Monk does not need a weapon to wound his enemies. His gods turned him into a weapon. On higher levels, he can achieve Supreme Reign of Fists technique. And the Priest is a healer. Uh, at a high level, they will learn to resurrect. Although he is not a warrior, he can easily handle a mace. And then the Elementalist has attained the whole magical knowledge of this world in order to perform the most powerful attacks on his enemies. So we're going to leave this uh, first guy a warrior. Now, I don't like... He looks grumpy. He looks sad and grumpy. Like, why am I going in here? Why am I doing this? This guy looks a little more enthusiastic. So since this is a warrior and we have some points that we need to distribute, we're going to go ahead and strength dexterity and vitality we're going to spread it out a little bit now i was tempted to leave this a barbarian but i kind of want a paladin and good paladin and my axe and this you know looks more like a dwarf but we're i'm okay with this and again and we're going to go with intelligence since he can also heal and vitality and priest, um, well, she's pretty. I like that that portrait. Obviously, we're going to dump some into intelligence, and finally, elementalist. And I'm just <clears throat> leaving all of them but the barbarian as their base classes. I think this is a good mix. Uh, I may experiment with different types later. So we're going to go ahead and pump all of his points into intelligence. And I like that portrait, except I like that one better. And we're going to leave the difficulty on normal and launch the game. Now, the interface is really easy. You have the on-screen interface, obviously. And move side to side, you turn, and of course, forwards and backwards. Now, this interface very much reminds me of a old Strategic Simulations Inc. game. It was a great company. Put out some very cool computer games back in the day. Uh, they put out a game called Dungeon Hack, probably uh, before most of you were born or when you were very small children. 
Uh, it was in the very early 1990s. Uh, it had a very similar interface, except everything was static. Um, not much to look at compared to day standards, but the, it was very much similar. But this interface is beautiful. I love the textures. Um, you can also, if you have a gamepad of some kind, you can con control it with that. That's what I'm doing right now. Plus, you can look around a little bit. I may end up switching to that later. And, uh, not sure how to attack. Well, I see how to switch between characters, but that's... Nah, oh, I see. Okay. So you can also use a controller. This is also available for the PS4 from the PlayStation Store. So if you have a PlayStation 4, don't forget to check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a light, easy, uh, fun to, uh, to play game. And I've already actually played quite a bit of it. I'm starting over from scratch because the footage I captured, the aspect ratio was all screwed up. So I had to restart. So anyway, uh, we're going to go start and look for our first treasure. And... The uh, mouse works as your interface for everything. We got our choices here. And if you want to know where you've been, if you push the tab key, it shows you your, uh, your map. Uh, the, the only downside to it is until you actually step up close to something, it won't display it on the, uh, on the map. So if you want it to show up on the map, you have to pretty much, if, especially if it's a large room, you have to go all the way around. And then once you've done that, ta-da, you get the whole thing. We're going to go ahead and open this door, and then straight ahead, our, we find our first weapon. It's a, it's a knife. We're going to give it to the warrior, who's in the front. And then we see immediately see the store. It's locked. So we got to go find the key. Now, when I first played this, I didn't even pay much attention to the snake statues. Stuff like that are important hints, and you'll you'll find out why. <coughs> also, I may end up muting the the audio from time to time. I still have a cold, so I may go and have a coughing jag. So, if you see me playing, and you don't hear any audio, I'm probably hacking up a lung, and I just have the, the microphone muted. Alrighty, and then we're gonna fight our first uh, foe of the game. You can see we're blocked off over here, and then there's the, the... Oh, I forgot to do something. Oh, no, I didn't. And that's pretty much how you fight. Now you don't want to be up against a wall and do that, because you'll actually take damage. Alrighty. So we now have that key. <coughs> and you'll notice, you know, these are the health and mana bars. They do go up slowly after a while, but you can also rest which I might do now to show you that real quick and you'll see if you open up any of the character portraits you'll see this right here this is your interface for your armor so you can remove and add weapons and armor and that kind of thing so I'm gonna go ahead and push the snooze button and we're gonna take a little nappy poo just a little snooze okay so we have the key, we click, click on the keyhole, and away we go. And it does automatically save your game for you, but you know, like in any role-playing game, make sure you save often, and you'll see why later. And 
our second foe is this big old nasty spider. That is just absolutely hideous. Before we get too far down here, I'm going to go back a ways and explore some more because there's a lot of stuff I just kind of missed. Like the stead end, apparently, that I can't seem to turn around in for some reason. Wait a minute. Ah, I found a secret. And a goofy hat. Pirate hat. Oh, we'll put it on the Paladin. Along with the gladiatorial sandals. You have to pay attention to visual cues like that. If you look at the floor a little closer, you'll see a number of holes in the ground, and if I walk forward, I'd have set off a trap where these spikes come shooting out. So... The author has done a really good job hiding those. Some traps are not, are unfortunately, not as obvious as others. Only the one who knows will be at peace. Okay, not sure what that means. And that actually takes you to the next level. So I actually made a wrong turn. And all of these... Except for that one, obviously, will open up things with monsters in them. So I'll show you. Heal that guy. And unfortunately, there's nothing in these. It's just you just get the experience, which is okay. So, and snooze often. Trust me. There's one thing I do want to talk about is I do love the textures that they used in this game. Uh, it's you know, not, you know, super high def or anything like this, but for a fun, light, easy game, these are pretty sharp. I mean, even the, the carpet looks really good. And the flags you saw earlier, uh, the stone looks like stone with moss growing in between it. It is really a superb job that they've done with this. Another snake. Oh, can never get that ambush. <laughs> So, same as before, we're going to take a little nappy poo. Build up, 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 bleh, build up everybody's health and mana.
So I enjoyed that little interface or that little uh, animation where it did where you were going up the stairs. That was kind of cool. So we got another knife, and I'm gonna give that to my priestess, which doesn't make any sense, and those to him. So like I said, be sure you sure to check out every corner. Oh, I heard something. I heard a scuttling. Oh, I did hear a scuttling. Ooh, there's two of them. Definitely a save point. Okay, here we go. Give my priestess time to recover. Probably should have saved that. Oh well. And Take that. Oh, we have a Roman sword. One handed damage 13 to 16 speed is normal. I'm going to give that to the mage so she has a weapon. Is the only thing in this room? Yep. Maybe. Like I said, check everything. Okay, nothing seems out of place, so. And with that, we're going to do a little snooze. saved so doo, 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 off we go oh crap don't remember this but oh yeah I do so my guess is that you're looking for that With a nice fanfare, we go uh, go check things out. Do, do, do. Boots. Hmm. Let's give those to him, and then exchange those with her. Although I haven't, uh, you know what? Let's do this. So everybody's got a piece of armor. Oh, I remember this room. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> what that is, is that that spits out... Oh. I bet that deactivates it. Or that deactivates it. Okay, well, apparently I'm just an idiot. Because I missed that the first time I played through that. So you can deactivate traps, just make sure you look around. And nappy time.
Okay, we've had a wee nap, and so we're going to keep on going. I bet there's a snake. See the statue? Ta-da! Oh, I forgot to give him his, his new weapon. So, stone hammer, much better damage. Well, yeah. And I should give that to her. for a hat, which we will give to her. Okay, so we defeated a couple more of those snakes, and nap time. I really am enjoying this game. I think the uh, game developers did a marvelous job with it. Um, made me a little nostalgic playing uh, uh, playing it for the old games that I used to play back in the 90s. I mean, way back, I was like just fresh out of the Navy. And pardon me for a second, but I know this is a trap. And I'll show you. 